It's an eight minute game. Rapid section. It's a bit of an unusual opening this fourth person is doing. Let's bring this knight over here. Magic of forks with the knight. They're like stealth stealth creatures, they've resigned. So that was very quick, but we just take a quick look. It did look a bit like a, a strange opening that the opponent actually put in place here. Seem to be back to front in a sense. Uh, just throw that on there. So because they've opened the king size pawn, there's no pieces developed behind it. It's got one piece out at the moment, so it's got one, two pawns developed. Well, a third pawn which got taken, and we have three pieces actually developed pretty similar to um, an, another game that we had where the opponent pushed the pawns down we counted how many pawns they'd actually moved and we counted how many pieces we actually developed uh, I think it was about three or four that we had actually done and the opponent had pushed four pawns and their pieces were on the back sometimes it's not a good thing pushing the pawns because you leave holes in the back but I've seen players be able to push the pawns and then support their pawns later on with their pieces um, it's a very strange thing but it all depends how you react to that situation of the pawns pushing if you know that you need to develop your pieces then start developing your pieces as early as possible so that you're not caught short the power with the pawns is that because they are the lesser um, costing piece if you're attacked by a pawn then you have to shift your piece around so you may have to move your piece more than once or twice if you're landing where the pawns are going to be but the downside to that is the pawns can't go backwards once they've gone forward that step has been made so really after that point if you're using a bit of science and strategy you can draw the opponent's pawns out if they are a pawn pusher and then look to work around the spaces that are left to attack those pawns later on so we pushed on to the bishop and it's not it's not liking that knight move is the gauge bar but felt fairly happy with that um, I'm trying to entice things you know pawn pushing here that sort of thing get some activity going because it's not really put any activity in but at the same token want to get my pieces around towards my king so that my king doesn't feel like it's home alone so then they brought their knight out I did think well if we're taking here it's going to be opening up here then it's going to obviously start working his rooks on the file so that's always the danger 
but because I'd got quite a few pieces around my king area, my king didn't really feel alone. So if that did take place, then we would be okay because we've got our pieces already prepared. So they captured and it gave a big gaping hole here because basically that pawn was supporting this pawn. So that's the you know the idea that I was explaining around. Okay, you can draw the pieces out, and basically from taking the supporting pawn from this gives this fork situation on three pieces, and that's when the opponent resigned. So yes being careful about pawn pushes but then looking at what is behind that pawn push if you can weather the storm and then create a situation whereby you're taking either the head of the snake or you're taking the base of the snake then that structure will fall quite rapidly